Um, next up is a presentation by Steeler Baby. Um, the Giant versus a Baby, or how Steeler Baby got his groove back. I get to be part of this one, so I'm so excited. Um, Still Baby has a, has a slight cough tonight, so I'll be standing in for Still Baby tonight. Um, for those of you who are in the back and can't see him, uh, this is Steeler Baby. Um, occupation Baby, obviously. His big hobby is trying to find his parents. Turn-ons, anything black and gold, hypocycloids, Barney, Leechy Leg meetings, turn-offs, diaper rash. Uh, <laughs> Steeler Baby's exact origins are Unknown, he was accidentally orphaned uh, at a tailgate party in Log B, up <laughs> River Stadium, a long time ago. His only faint recollections of his parents are a tattered Jack Lambert jersey, uh, this stale smell of iron tea beer, and burning kielbasa. So, <laughs> to help in this monumental sort of you know endeavor of finding his parents, uh, right before the 2006 Super Bowl, uh, somehow Steeler Baby with his precious tiny little rubber hands, learning flash cobbled together this very simple saying. Uh, essentially there's a lot of phrase words on the side, and this uh, particular phrase uh, sort of took off a little bit, and I'll try to channel Steeler Baby a little bit here by a voice that sounded somewhat like, Obey, Steeler Baby. Uh, pretty appropriate, um, you know, talking to Steeler fans and sort of getting to the heart of everything that is black and gold and what Pittsburghers really love about the Steelers. Um, like so, like any red-blooded, little rubber-skinned QB doll, and to help finance this very exhaustive, exhaustive search that he's been doing, he added uh, a very quick Cafe Press site um, to merchandise and things, apologize to uh, Will Glazer in the center, um, really as a vehicle to, to you know, communicate with fans. Uh, I have to say that Steel Baby made about $300 from selling stuff in about five years. Um, <laughs> Primarily to these three people right here. Uh, Steeler Baby meets Steeler Gorilla. Steeler Gorilla meets Steeler Baby. Um, looking for his parents. This is uh, Steeler Baby got dangerously close to Miss America once. Uh, he thought that she would have been a great candidate. Uh, fortunately, he ended up throwing up on the gentleman's shirt. It, was uh, it wasn't a very good scene. But obviously, you know, t looking for his parents takes up a lot of time. Okay. Focus on the doll. Focus on the doll. Um, another candidate. Seemed promising. Uh, seemed to have all the correct assets, can I say. Uh, not lactating. That's a problem. Uh, he seems to be looking the wrong way, too, for some reason. There. Uh, so really, if, you know, if, if the Roonies never step up and file adoption papers, or Ben, or Troy, or anyone like that, um, I really, I'm not sure where this photo came from, but I think th this couple here just make great parents for Steeler Baby. Um, they're dressed in their Sunday best. Uh, <laughs> they went to Olin Mills. They got this picture taken. Um, yeah. So, a few years go by. Uh, some history happens. Uh, something exciting. Our country gets the first ever black and gold Steeler fan in the Oval Office. Uh, <laughs> so what better time to be a Steeler baby, right? Oh, but this uh, somewhat uh, ubiquitous poster from the campaign, you probably all remember that, it's done by a gentleman called Shepard Ferry. Um, and uh, you probably know him best now for his, his fight with the AP Press. Um, he used a photo in the background, it's great to post her in front. Uh, I'm not really here to debate fair use, but it seems somewhat hypocritical that he actually sent a cease and desist letter to Steeler Baby saying, I don't want you to use the word obey anymore in anything that you do, believe it or not. Someone he saw the Cafe Press site. So like, um, Steeler Baby sent off this letter to City Paper, Chris Potter was kind enough to say, this is a pretty interesting story. <laughs> This was Steeler Baby's official, his, his, his official response to Shepard Ferry. Uh, he did this right after ripping down the Hope poster that was hanging by his basket. <laughs> and really, within days of the City Paper article, um, 
the, the online um, article that's your favorite, it just it took off in the blogosphere like you wouldn't believe. And literally like two days later, there were over 500 different blog entries from, from people from all around the world talking about this. Um, a lot of people who, Gawker is a really big site by the way, that picks up this, this kind of stories and fed a lot of stuff. Um, I, and a lot of it had to do with the this very hypocritical nature of, of what Shepard Ferry does. And I realized that um, fair use is different than trademark. He's protecting a, a company brand, right? But philosophically, there's, um, there's some commonality. And this is from a website, um, Art for Change, um, Mark Valens. Everything you see here, the, the source is on the, the one side. Obey Giant, Shepard Ferry's work is on the other side. Honestly, I mean, you know, and obviously it, it can't, uh, you know, sum up his 15 year career by, by this. He's done a lot of great stuff, but it, it definitely seems somewhat hypocritical uh, to do this. And really, you have to think about as far as the trademark goes, you know, what is the, what is the intent? Um, you know, was I trying, was, was Steeler Baby trying to, to deceive someone into thinking it was a Shepherd Fairy project? <laughs> Are these people going to be confused by Shepard Fairy? Do they even give a fuck who Shepard Fairy is? No. no. So after about two weeks of just being flamed, and, and coincidentally, the day after the AP Press had to counter sue Shepard Fairy, uh, still already got this in the mail from from his email from Obey Clothing, saying we're sorry, we were all overzealous. Steeler Beatty gets a chance to, uh, to celebrate there. Um, and really, it's just about trying to find his parents, right? So, uh, Steeler Beatty celebrating here. He goes to a lot of tailgate parties. A lot of tailgate parties trying to find his parents. Uh, and such a, a great, such a great audience. I'd like to give you a little preview of his next uh, campaign coming out. Hopefully we won't have any problems with this one. So that has to be followed with a beer break, right? <laughs> 10 minutes, see you guys back.